thanks for coming on, Derek. Um, it's great, great to have someone on who's been so successful recently. Um, but we'll we'll start off with basically your earliest football memory. What what do you remember when you were starting out as a kid? Your first proper team or, or getting involved with the club? Uh, that would be in um, obviously I came from Ghana, mm -hmm. so I don't really remember much. Even though I was, I, but I left there when I was young, so I don't really remember much. But my first proper experience was playing for Croydon. It was a Sunday team. And just, yeah, just going on the park and playing and for school as well. And that's where things started kicking off a bit. So it's just Croydon and for school, Cotwood Primary School. Yeah. And was there, was there a position that you always favoured when you were younger? Or did, did, you, did you have any idols that you wanted to be like? Yeah, the positions I played was obviously striker because I like scoring goals. And at that age, I did score a few. So it was great. And my idol was Ricardo Kaká. Mm -hmm. A bit old, but <laughs> no, no, I just no. used to look up to him and just the way he dribbles with the ball. And that's what I wanted to be like. Yeah. And I think I've managed to pick up a few things from watching a lot of YouTube videos and watching a lot of his games as well. So that was great. Good. And then... Obviously, you, you know, you play, you play locally, you play for your school. Was, the, was it always your aim to go as high as you possibly could or were you picked up at a young age and it sort of caught you by surprise or how, how did the first sort of like scouts start to get involved and, and see you at a local level? Yeah, when I, well, when I first came to England, it was just something for me to do. I mean, I played in Ghana, I would imagine so, but when I came here, I didn't know how it worked. So playing for the school, was just obviously trying to make friends and that's when it just kicked off and I had a contact we played it against another school and I had a contact Fiona Amfield she used to work at Fulham and that's when she started speaking to my parents and said oh Derek could come into Fulham and we could have a look at him and take it from there so that's where things really started kicking off but before that I didn't really know how it worked I just started off just playing with my friends and yeah yeah and then what were your first memories at Fulham was it, was it like once or twice a week going there so how, how old would you have been at that age um I was about nine mm -hmm. yeah actually wait Fiona step was at Chelsea so actually I went to Chelsea first oh, okay and then I went to Fulham and yeah it was it was different it was um lots of competition the um football was very high as well so it was something new to me, but um, I mean, it's football at the end of the day. I was just there to enjoy it. So I didn't really think much of it apart from going there, seeing how it is and just enjoying it. And yeah. And then when, so how, how long were you at Fulham for? I was there from nine. I, so I signed with them and I was there from nine to after my scholarship. So 17. Hmm. That's a pretty long time, isn't it? Even even that age to to spend with a, a club at that level. Yeah, um, no, it was really great. I learned a lot of stuff from them. Um, uh, one of my main coaches that I remember was Mark Pembridge. Mm -hmm. He played for the club as well, and he taught me. He picked me up from a young age, moved me up a couple of ages, and he really helped me progress. And I still remember his name from now. And it's just I'm grateful that I met him as well. So. Were there any players at Fulham in your age group or around your age group that did go on to, to play for the first team or have successful careers within England? Or Yeah, um, Corley Woodrow, I think he's playing for Barnsley. Barnsley I remember yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, I played with him and um, there's a couple in the round League One and League Two. Yeah, I just <laughs> I haven't been... Being here in New Zealand is very hard to keep yeah, up to date with football. Other side yeah. Of it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So then, at that was then, did you get a chance? You didn't have any loan spells from Fulham, did you? Did you go to Crystal Palace after that? So it was it was loan because at the end of my second year, I went on loan mm -hmm. to Crystal Palace. So that's okay. where I went there. I played a couple of games, and they decided to offer me a professional contract. And I couldn't really say no to that. So I ended up staying at Crystal Palace. It's a bit of a strange one, obviously, going on loan to, you know, obviously you just stayed with the youth team. 
Um, yeah. It doesn't really happen that often at that age, does it really? From from one club to another, just just to see what you like. Like, how how long did you spend at Crystal Palace before they offered you a contract? Uh, about three or six months. Okay. So with that at Fulham, because we were in the Premier League and they were sourcing players from here and there and there, it just became tough to get play and um, playing time, mm. and even at the youth level. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, with them getting players from everywhere it was very tough and I mean I tried my best went to training did what I could but with them getting players like Moussa Dembele who's at Atletico Madrid now and stuff like that it's just really hard so Crystal Palace came knocking and it was just an opportunity to get game time and yeah I was there for three six months and they decided to offer me a contract nice and were they just about had they just got promoted themselves Crystal Palace I think at that point they were in not the Premier League, the Championship. Mm. So no, it was good. Got a couple of game time, and then they got promoted yeah. to the Premier League, and then oh. it's time getting a little bit harder again. <laughs> yeah. So did you yeah. get much involvement with with the first team? Like, did you ever get to train with them or? With yeah, we've been with the, been with the under twenty threes. Yeah, we played, we trained with the first team most of the time. And just played in that age group when the um, Saturday or the Sunday. Yeah. Thing. That's good. And who were the managers around then? Was, was it like Ian Holloway around that period yeah. early on? Yes. Yes. Yeah. What was he like? I imagine he's a bit of a, a crazy character to have as a manager. <laughs> crazy character, but he, he when every time we came, he made us feel, you know, with his jokes and that, he made us feel at home with the first team. So, mm. yeah, we, yeah, no, it was good from him. And did you ever feel like there was a realistic pathway to, to break into the first team? Did you see any of the players from your age group doing that? Or as soon as you go to the Premier League, is it like they're just buying more people? So it's really good. I mean, it's like as soon as they go to the Premier League, it's more, for me, what I thought was it's more results. They have to get the results and yeah. they have, because it's, it's the biggest league, they have to stay in. Whereas in the Championship, you have a bit more leeway of bringing the kids through. Mm. Whereas in the Premier League, it's results, results, results. So the pathway became hard. And I think most of the boys did, did as well. It was really hard for most of the boys as well that were already there. There was a couple that had been there for a long time and kept pushing and kept pushing and still was was just a bit too hard with them being in the Premier League. So then with a few low moves, did you did you actively go and seek them or did they just come up? Like did a few clubs just 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 ask about your availability or was it you pushing to try and get some first team football? I think it was the club. It was the club and them talking to a few clubs that helped me out because I went on loan to uh, Hayes and Yedden mm -hmm. at one point and yeah, I, I, <laughs> so I was trying to get a lot of game time, went on loan to Hayes and Yedin, and the weather was really, 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 really bad for the time that I was there that we didn't actually play any games. So I had oh, to really? <laughs> yeah. Oh, wow. <laughs> so, yeah. And then, then was it the end of that season that your contract was up at, at Palace and it was time to for something new, or was there anything else yeah, you could have it. easily gone into? Or? Yeah. But even though I was there and I... Didn't get a lot of game time. Most of the games that I played for the under 23s, I thought I did well because I, I scored all the time that I played. That at the back of my mind, I still thought that there was a possibility I would stay. Yeah. But um, that wasn't the case. So at the end of the of, at the end of that, then yeah, we had the meeting and that's when everything ended at the club. And what goes through your head at that point? obviously it's devastating but you know is it are you half expecting it and you're like fine I've already started to prepare for what I'm going to do next are you thinking this is all I've wanted in my life do I have I got a career in football or do I try my hand at something new like what are your immediate thoughts at that point yeah, it was tough at first I'm not going to lie but I feel that mentally I'm quite strong so it Maybe it took me about three, three to three days to a week to get used to it. Then I thought to myself, I can't 
really dwell on it that much. It is what it is at the end of the day. And I have to try and go somewhere to keep playing because it's something that I want to do. Mm -hmm. So I spent most of my time going to a few different clubs and it was tough. Because at that age, when you go to non-league clubs, they're looking for players that have been playing men's football and yeah. not under 23s. And it, yeah, it was pretty tough, but I just kept pushing and it didn't happen in England, unfortunately. So um, I went to Scandinavia where I played for a club called Ostalen FF. So that gave me a bit of playing time there. Then... And how did you get that back. move? Did you was that through an agent or did you like have a few contacts over there? Uh, that was through an agent. Yeah, he just contacted me via email, and he just sorted that out for me. And everything went to plan. Is, is it from the people we've spoken to? Scandinavia is always a very popular place for for football to get a decent level of football, and obviously it's quite a nice area to live in as well. So was that an enjoyable experience for you? Oh, yeah. Well, no, it was good. Obviously, I when I left Crystal Palace and I went to a few places for trial, I hadn't played football for a while. So when that chance came, I took it. And when I went there, yeah, it wasn't too bad, actually. The standard of football was great and the living was great. And I was there for about six months and the season finished there. So I had to come back. Was, was there a chance for you to stay on there or was it just on the short term thing? But... It was only just a short term thing. So when I came back, I had to try and find another another place to go. And what was the next step for you then? Then what was on the cards for you next? Um, I went. I signed up to LinkedIn, <laughs> and um, just spoke to a few people. And luckily, I had one person send me a message. Yeah. If I wanted to go to New Zealand, so through that. At first, again, I didn't know where New Zealand was, and I looked it up, and it was about 24 hours away. I was like, yeah. oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> so by chance, yeah, he contacted me, and he was like, I could sort you a six-month deal in New Zealand. And through that, I had nowhere else to go at that point, so I said, of course. So he sorted that for me, and... Long story short, in a way, I've been here for five years now. <laughs> so when you went on LinkedIn, like, were you posting videos of, like, your, like football highlights? Like, what sort of things were you putting out there to, to attract clubs or scouts or agents? It's just more my CV and, yeah, videos and anything that I could find to help help me out. I The lady that scouted me, Fiona Anfield, from mm -hmm. Fulham, she pushed a few of my stuff on LinkedIn as well. And we're still keeping contact till this day. So she's, she's still helping me out. And luckily, someone sent me a message on LinkedIn and things happened. Were there, were there a few? Because obviously, we, we try and help people out on LinkedIn now. And I think it's becoming a lot more popular, especially in the last year with, with COVID and whatever. And, and seasons getting cancelled here and there. I think a lot of footballers have turned to LinkedIn to try and do it themselves. Did you feel... Did you ever get any approaches from agents that seemed a bit dodgy or was this like the first one you had and everything turned out okay? Uh, most of the... At first, I did have a few, but they always ask for money and as soon as they ask for money, you know that it's not legit and um, some of them will be asking for passport copy without actually giving you any... Just just asking for your passport copy and yeah for me that did not seem legit as well so when that offer came through I went to Fiona and we spoke about it so we got a bit more details from oh, I think it was Sam Kennedy from LinkedIn and um, we spoke to him and before we gave everything out we made sure that everything was legit and I had a call with the coach that for the club that I was going to go to. So I had a um, call with him and we spoke and he confirmed that that everything is legit and that's how I went about it. And did they offer you a contract straight away or was it like a trial? Because it's a long way to go for a trial. Yeah, a long way to go for a trial. So with New Zealand, they have two seasons. So they, ha they have the winter and the summer. Mm -hmm. So the winter is more of the um, 
the clubs around Auckland and more regional. So I think he's seen some of my videos and he just decided to take the risk. Mm. And I guess I decided to take the risk going that far as well. And yeah, that's how he went about it. And was it was it like a long was it like just for that season or was it a longer contract than that or? So the contract was just for six months. So that was for the winter season. Yeah. And when I went, um, I thought I'd done all right. And the summer came around and he offered me another contract to stay for the summer and for me to. With that in mind, I liked it in New Zealand. It's, it's very chilled here. So that six months, I thought, why not? So I stayed for the summer and that's nah, been great. So what was it like? Like obviously away from the football pitch, uh, I presume you moved over on your own, like you didn't know anyone there. How was it adapting to to New Zealand? Obviously you couldn't be any further away from, from England. So what were your first few weeks, if you can remember, like settling in, how was it all? Uh, my first few weeks, I spent most of the time at the club. I was just... Um, they were showing me around. The coach was very nice. His assistant was showing me around the club. I met a few of the boys. So they were showing me around as well. And I mean, it's a beautiful place. And um, I just I just settled in very quickly. They fixed me up with a coaching job. So that kept me busy as well. And yeah, they just, they just done what they could to make me feel at home. Obviously, they knew how far it is from home as well for me. So they made it really good for me when I got here. And and, and then describe the, the style of football. Is it any was it any different to what you had experienced or was it just, you know, at the end of the day, your job is to score goals and everything else was fairly straightforward? Yeah, the style of football here is what I remember from it is very, very physical. Mm -hmm. Very, very physical. It's just up and down. The intensity is very high as well. And it's just da, 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 da. but from what, but I got used to it very quickly, obviously. And um, yeah, for me to stay longer, I knew what I had to do. Because at one point I knew, okay, I like it here. And for me to stay, I knew what I had to do, which was to score goals for him in the um, winter. Mm -hmm. And I, I just had that at the back of my mind. And that's what I did from then on. And luckily enough, he, he decided to offer me another contract for the summer. That was with Eastern Suburbs, was it, yeah? Yes, that was with Eastern Suburbs. Yeah, so how long did you stay with them before before moving on? Uh, I stayed with them for two years. Two years. Yeah, and okay. with these visa issues, I moved to Hamilton. Okay, so so, so is that, just, how, how does that work then? What's the difference? So they're, they're all at the top level of New Zealand, those clubs, yeah? Yes. Um, was it right that some play in the Australian, like some clubs in New Zealand play in the Australian league as well, like Wellington or? Uh, so Wellington is uh, New Zealand as well. Mm. So it's the regional. So some, there are clubs in Wellington, there are clubs in Auckland and they just play in their own league and we play in our own league. Okay. So there's the Southern League, the Northern League and they just have their own league that they play in and we have our own league that we play in as well. And then there's the red, so when, so winners of the New Zealand top flight, so to speak, today, is there then a, like a sort of Champions League that they can go into or like a, a oh, more so, international competition? Or? Yeah, so the winter is that regional one that I just said, so the Auckland, well, the Southern have their own league and the Northern have their own league. Then the summer comes about and it becomes a franchise. Okay. So the top teams, let's say Eastern Suburbs, Auckland City, Hamilton Wanderers, then Team Wellington from Wellington, Wellington Phoenix, Southern from the other regional part as well. We all come together and we play that summer league and that one is a franchise. So that becomes the top, top league of New Zealand. Okay. So is, the more, is that the, the main one? Is there more pressure on that one? Then? Is that the... Yes. Does the win is the other one like the warm up to that sort of? Yeah. yeah, so the summer league is more of the um as seen as more professional. Yeah. Because it comes on TV and stuff like that. And there's a few people that follow it as well. And the 
price for coming first is very high as well. So it's seen as more the professional league here. And what is what are the fans like over there? What what sort of attendances do you get? Is obviously New Zealand are, are big into their cricket and rugby, but what's it like for football over there? For I mean, being at Hamilton is not the biggest of place, so the club do get a few few people, but I wouldn't say it's a lot, mm-hmm. but just enough that you can hear them what you're playing. So, <laughs> so yeah, no, it's enough. And is it, you know, like going going back to that? Is if you were to walk down the street in your in your local area, will people recognise you, or is is football just a bit under the radar? Or I think more more of the kids that are on social media will recognise you, and it just yeah. depends what how much information your club is putting out. Because mm-hmm. even though some of the games are on TV, I don't think a lot of people do watch it. For in, for an instant, in the summer. If it's on TV, I mean, a few of the people would rather be at the beach than be at home watching yeah. it on TV when yeah. it's the summer. Whereas when the club put out more information on the social media, then a few people pick up on stuff and maybe you might get recognised if you're scoring goal or doing well. You've, so you, you last season, talked to obviously last season, you um, the one that's just finished, you did uh, score the most, well, the joint most goals in the league. Um, yeah. but they, you didn't get the golden boot because the other guy missed the first game of the season, was it, or, or something? Uh, yeah, that was that was the case. Yes. <laughs> so, uh, pretty frustrating, I imagine, on that one. Nothing that nothing really you could do on that one. I thought they might have shared it at least. So. Yeah, I mean, from what I've known, that's not how it works. But they had it in the uh, in the in their rule, so. There's not much I can do about that. So, but at the end of the day, I know what I did, and I mean, it was a good season for me and the club. So, yeah, I, I'll just take that as it is. You did get in the team of the season as well, though, didn't you? Yeah, the team of the season as well, which was great. We, from the past two years, I just put my head down. Obviously, moving from. I thought I had a all right season at Eastern Suburbs um, when I first went. And at some point when a few situations happens, your head or whatnot is not in the right place when you're playing. And um, coming to Hamilton, the club were great. And so I've sorted things out for me and they made me feel really settled. And so I managed to put my head down and just work on the stuff that I needed to work on. And uh, luckily enough, he showed up. He showed up when we um, played in the games, and the season last year was great for me and the se- uh, the club as well. And this year was even we w- went up a higher level, and no, it was great. Do you, do you feel you've progressed every year you've been in New Zealand? Are you still going upwards in in terms of your career, like ability wise, and and what you're achieving? Yeah, I think. I don't know whether that's to do with age or whatnot, but I just managed to find out what what makes me tick. And the last year, I it's when it kicked off, and this year I've done the same thing as I did last year. And yeah, so I think maybe it's to do with age, but I found out what makes me tick on the uh, on the pitch, and it's working for me. So hopefully, I can keep that going. <laughs> And in between the, the summer and the winter seasons, do you get opportunity to go back to England at all or like see family and friends or are you just permanently in New Zealand now? Is this, you see this as your home? Um, usually during the winter, I do get a bit of time to go home, but because of COVID, I haven't managed to, um, it's been a few years since I've been home. And I was planning on coming back last summer, but luckily I didn't. Otherwise, I would not be able to come back here. Because I'm not a resident, so mm. I mean, I do like it here, and but home is home. So maybe at one point I would like to come home, obviously, because that's where my family are. But hopefully, I'll be able to come here as well. And why not? New Zealand can be my second home. <laughs> have, have you had any offers to go back home? Has there, has there been any interest from clubs back in England at all, or, or or anywhere else? What what sort of coverage? Obviously, you said it's very limited over there, but. Does your success become noticed elsewhere in with other clubs? Unfortunately, not as much back home. 
I mean, I do post a few stuff on um, Twitter and Facebook, but um, I've not had that much contact back home. And um, there was a couple of people that I spoke to that said they will, should come to a showcase here and a showcase here and and that, but I just haven't managed to come home for that long to do it. Yeah. So hopefully things can go back to normal, then I can look at other options and just take it from there. But it's just at the moment, it's just a risk. If I was to leave yeah. here, then come back home, then if things don't work out, then I won't be able to come back and stuff like that. So hopefully things can go back to normal, fingers crossed, then I can look at other options as well. How, how long is the gap between the two seasons in New Zealand? How much of a time do you get in between? <laughs> this year has been a week. Oh, really? Is that it? Yeah. So oh, wow. we finished our summer. We had a week off and we started last week. <laughs> All right. Wow. Straight into it. I was going to suggest maybe you could go on loan somewhere and then come back, but maybe not for that week. <laughs> <laughs> What's that? Uh... Go on. Sorry, go on. With... Um... Australia as well, with them not being able to get a few foreign players from usually where they get them from, they've started looking into our league as well. Okay. So luckily, a few of their players have been offered to go play there. But then again, that comes with risk as well. So Yeah. What, 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 how would you compare the New Zealand league, for instance, to, if you could break it, if you could compare it to an English league, what sort of level would you equate that's, that's similar to England? I would say the top league, which will be the summer, would be uh, the league below League One, I would think. Yeah. Yeah, was that, is that still conference? conference no, league right? Two, so you got League One, League Two, then conference, yeah. Yeah, so League Two, below, below League Two, I would, I would say, league, below League Two and League Two, yeah. Yeah. And then if you, like you said, some people get the opportunity in Australia, that's a bit more of a lucrative league, is it? Is that, is that something you'd be willing to, like you say, it's a bit of a risk, but is it something you'd be willing to give it a go? Yeah, I think it would give it, you've got more opportunity there, obviously, with the A-League. If you manage to go to um, a good club in Melbourne and you do well there, there's more opportunity with maybe getting scoured for the A-League. So it, it, would, it would be something I'd be interested in. But just not at the moment. Yeah, fair enough. I, I was, I think, uh, going back to COVID, I think you're probably in one of the best countries in the world in terms of how things have been have been handled. How how has it been for the last year for you there? Like, what's what's the overall, what's your world been like? How's it been impacted? Um, at first, we had to cut our summer league short last year. Yeah, around about March, if I remember correctly, and they did everything really quickly here. We went straight into lockdown for a yeah. couple of months and I think for me that was a good way to do it and we managed to after, after I think it was one month or two months we were in lockdown I mean it was very hard but she, we had to do it and when we did it we came out of lockdown and there was a few cases here and there but here when we get maybe one or two cases we go straight back into lockdown there's no messing about. And now everything is back to normal. We're, everyone is back in level one. And yeah, we don't really think about COVID that much, but I know how it's affecting people back home. And yeah. Um, yeah. I, th I think one thing that's obviously, you know, New Zealand have got a good leader in place and done a good job compared to what we've got. But I think we're always teased when New Zealand's got festivals on and and all these things are open and we see pictures like that and it's just like we're so far away from that um, but yeah fingers crossed things that things are slowly starting to get back to normal a little bit um, but yeah we'll, we'll see we'll see um, so in, in terms of your future obviously you know you, you come into like you said with, with age you're, you're getting better at football and you're getting to, towards the peak of your career do you, do you see yourself in New Zealand for, for the foreseeable future do you want to just stay there and and carry on getting awards or and achievements and, and, you know, see how long you can last there? Or do you have your eyes on moving elsewhere? I think, obviously, being a professional setting as uh, Crystal Palace, the aim for me would be able to get back to a club. 
professional, a mm-hmm. professional club. So for me, I think that's where I want to go. It's just finding a club that is willing or finding the opportunity. That is what I'm trying to figure out how I can go about it at the moment. But it would be, I, I want to be able to go back out and try again and see what I can do. And how, how does it work with, you mentioned the visa before, how does that work with you in, in New Zealand? Because if it's still a semi-professional setup, uh, do you just get like a working visa for so many years or is that, is that how it works? Yeah, it's just a working visa for the club because I do coaching as well. So um, I, they employ me as a coach and playing as well. So for a couple of years, every two years, then you have to renew it again. But is it easy enough to renew every, every two years? Like, there's no really limitations on that. Not really. As long as the club are willing to uh, sponsor you and show that they're going to look after you, then it's fairly not easy, but they can get it done. It can be yeah. done. Yeah. So speak a bit more about your coaching. Obviously, I think that's what you you wear in there as a DT coach in your own your own gear. Is oh, that yeah. something? <laughs> 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 Just slightly get it in there. <laughs> um, free appetite. <laughs> So um, is that something you do a few times a week then, is it as well? Yeah, I mean, I work for the club. I take a group and take the under-14s and I take them for training during the week. But with that, since I've been here, I've just wanted to help most of the kids and with their technical side of the game, I'm passing on a few stuff that I've learned myself. And I started a little... I wouldn't say a little company. It's just something that I can use a platform to help the kids out. And yeah, it's, it hasn't been too bad. It keeps me busy. And yeah, no, it's been well, good. What's, what's the passion like for with, with kids over there for football? Is it, is it is it hard to convince them to get involved in that as opposed to cricket and rugby? Or, or obviously I imagine there's still big coverage of the Premier League and Champions League. Are there still kids over there that idolise Ronaldo and Messi as much as they would in any other country or? yeah they love football hmm. I think um, when I first came here it was more rugby that hmm. they, they they used to do but I think it's turning because obviously some of the parents don't want their kids to get hurt playing against some of the bigger kids in rugby so they're tuning into um, football now and at Hamilton most of the kids that have been taken and most of the kids that have been taken for DT coaching clinic as well have been they just they just love football yeah but they do a lot. They do a lot, but a lot of other activities. But some of them, football is becoming their main, their main sports that they want to do, which is great to see. If there is, if there is one thing you could change about football in New Zealand, what what would it be? Like whether it's from from what you do or the coverage or like how would what would you change? What do you think could be improved for football in New Zealand? For me, it's just more. Just a bit more technical training for the kids, I think. Yeah. It's, um, I've seen I've seen some kids that play that technically are still not there yet when they're about 14 or 15. Mm-hmm. Whereas if you compare it to England at 9, 10, technically most of the kids are good. And um, it's just a bit more <clears throat> just learn a bit more about the game as well, positioning wise. So that's what with DT coaching clinic, I'm trying, I'm trying on my side to help with the kids at the club with that yeah. technical aspect of the game and and just maybe like so using your body on the field and just just stuff like that to help them out when they play and a bit more game knowledge as well. For me that's what I would I would change if I had the opportunity to. And with uh, I mean, you, you mentioned obviously you were born in Ghana. Has there ever been any uh, international sort of recognition? Is that something obviously I'm sure you'd love to do? But have they ever been in touch with you, or do they recognise your achievements in New Zealand as well? Mm, no. <laughs> no. When I was at Fulham, um, when I was at Fulham, I went to Ghana, and we had a little. I went to the Ghana under was it the under twenty? Under 20, they had a little camp going on in Ghana and I we did play a couple of games, but did not really hear anything back or no follow-up or anything like that. So 
Do you reckon you could? Do you reckon you're at a good enough level to to break into the squad or be given a chance? I believe in myself. I think I, I can if I had the opportunity. It's just getting the opportunity from Ghana. So yeah. hopefully, fingers crossed. You never know. I'll I'll tag them in this video when we put it out and try and get their attention so they can start watching. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So we're with we're in, in in your league as well. The obviously you spoke about a couple of players going over to the A League and stuff. Um, is it is it what what tends to be the your average player in that league? Is it mainly New Zealand players, like mainly people from you know the country, or do you get um, people from other countries coming there at the end of their career, just somewhere nice to live? Like what sort of mix of a footballer is it in a league? I think it's a few people that are looking for an opportunity to play and they can't find it anywhere else and they've had a contact from here and they come here and they end up loving it that they end up staying. Mm. So it's, it's the same situation as me. It's probably a few players that got released just looking for opportunity and when this comes up, they everyone wants to play football. So they're not going to say no to an opportunity that has been offered to them. But I, I haven't seen players that have come here and then they're at the end of their football career. It's just more mainly young, hungry people that are looking to play football at, at the end of the day. That's what being here I've seen. And so you see you're 20, 26 now, are you? Yeah, 26 now. 26. So let's say in five years' time, when you're 31, what do you want to have happened in those next five years? What for me as in my football career? Yes, or? football football career. Realistically, what do you, what do you want to achieve in those next five years? Um, I want to see if I'll be able to. the The main focus for me now is obviously I've done the summer. It's just see if I can get into a professional club. Mm -hmm. Just, I just want the opportunity to try again. I don't think I had enough time when I was at Crystal Palace to to. Um, get the best out of me and now that I think I've figured out what makes me tick and what not and I just it's just the open opportunity to find a club that will give me the, the chance to just try again and see how far I've come and see what I can do yeah and, and do you have an agent like then that's, that's always looking for opportunities for you do, you do you look yourself like on LinkedIn all the time or what tends to be yeah, the way you go about it I've just been doing it by myself and yeah. I mean it's pretty hard. You send a few messages here and there, but yeah, that's all you can do really. Put your video out there and just see what comes from it and yeah. Fair enough. Well fingers crossed this video helps uh get the word out there about you then and um just bring some more attention to the league, I suppose, in New Zealand. So obviously yeah doing great things over there last last few years. So it'll be um important to help spread the word really. But yeah, that's about it. Yeah. Um, we'll keep in touch, Derek. Good luck with the with the new season. We'll keep an eye on your progress and, and cover it oh, on yeah. our Twitter page whenever you do it and everything. And um, yeah, we'll keep in touch and hopefully your career pushes on from here. Oh, thank you. Well, thanks for the interview as well. And You're welcome. Nice to meet you as well. So Yeah, great. you too, mate. All right, we'll keep in touch. And yeah, thanks very much again. Okay, no worries. Thank you. Cheers, Derek. Thanks. Bye.